Apple ARM CPUs are great. You can run the ARM windows on them under parallels, but what if you want to run x86 Linux? That's where UTM comes in. In addition to traditional virtual machine functionality, UTM also includes the ability to emulate different hardware architecture. This allows you to run OSs that don't match the guest hardware. It's a fully open source stack based on QEMU. You can download it from mac.getutm.app. Once you have UTM installed, we're going to create a new virtual machine. And we're going to choose Emulate because of the mismatch between hardware and OS. Choose Linux. Browse for your ISO. In my case, I'm using Xbuntu, which is Ubuntu with a lighter weight desktop environment by default. On the hardware screen, you could increase the memory if you wanted to, but you want to make sure you put at least two CPUs. I'm going to use four, and you can optionally enable OpenGL acceleration. Storage is the max size. It's allocated dynamically. You can increase that if you want to. And a shared directory is useful for sharing files between the host OS and guest OS. On here, you want to, summary, you want to make sure you select Open VM Settings because there's a couple more changes we need to make, and you can optionally give it a friendly name. In the VM Settings, we need to turn on Force Multicore. You can also change the memory and CPU count in here. And under QEMU, we're going to turn on Balloon Device, which allows it to dynamically allocate memory. In display, this is where you can change the GPU acceleration on or off. And you could also go into network. By default, it's bridged mode, which is host and host virtual machines only. But you can go to shared mode, which allows you to connect, receive connections from other machines on your local network. At this point, it's just a basic standard Linux install. So just have to let the install run. The install does take a while, but once it's done, it actually is fast enough for use as far as a Linux installation goes. Here are a few Linux scripts and commands that you may find useful for finalizing your installation, including one I created to set up PA server so you're all ready for Delphi development. Once it finishes, I've run NeoFetch here so you can see <clears throat> the basic statistics about the installation, including the fact that it's running the x86-64 version of Xbuntu. Now we'll run PA server, get the IP address, and we'll copy that IP address to our clipboard and go over into Delphi. Create a new connection for Linux. and provide the connection information here. And then SDK Manager will import the SDK, and you'll notice that it will detect it as Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. And I had imported this previously, so it's gonna go a whole lot quicker now, just overriding the files. And now we're ready to deploy a simple application from Linux. But first, let's make sure we do have FMX Linux installed. And it is installed. We'll create a new blank multi-device application. Select Linux as our target platform. And I'm just going to run this blank application over on Linux real quick. That's it. We've compiled and deployed it. So let's jump back over, and there it is. Uh, see, it may not be the fastest Linux install, but it is plenty fast for uh, testing applications, especially considering you can do some of your testing on Windows or Mac OS as well for multi-device applications.